Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Do Your Part, where we look at some of the challenges that are facing our Muslim youth today and how to overcome them. And we look at some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to reform our character and to be a positive influence on our society. Today, we're talking about being hasty. And this episode is called Don't Be Hasty. Because haste is something which leads to a great deal of trouble in a person's life. And this has many, many, many aspects to it. And there are so many areas in which we can talk about haste and we can talk about taking our time. We begin by a statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that hastiness or being too quick or rushing to do something is from the shaitan. Haste is from the shaitan. So if haste is from the shaitan, then we need to avoid being hasty in our actions. And being hasty essentially means to rush, to do something too quickly without thinking about it. We have talked in a previous episode about the importance of finding a balance and that's just as true here as it is for anything else. We need to find that balance in the sense that we don't want to be hasty but at the same time we don't want to be too slow that we start missing things. But it's very important that we avoid this horrible characteristic of haste. And haste is often associated with our youth because in general in, in, your, in your younger years, in your youth, you're less wise, you have less life experience and you're more likely to sort of rush into things and to be a little bit hasty and sometimes to do things without thinking them over. And generally as you see people get older and you sort of ask them, they tend to make less hasty kind of decisions and they tend to uh, rely more on their life experiences. So we know that haste is something from the shaitan and this has so many areas in which it in which it, it covers in the religion of Islam. Let's just take one simple example. Let's look at the issue of the prayer. What does it mean to be hasty in the prayer? Hasty in the prayer like the one, like the hadith of the one who prayed badly. The hadith of the one who prayed badly. And in this hadith, a man entered the masjid and he prayed his prayer. And then when he prayed his prayer, he came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to him, he gave him the salam. He said to him, Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied back to his salam. And then he said to him, Irji' fa salli fa innaka lam tusalli. Go back and pray because you didn't pray. Go back and pray because you didn't pray. So the man went back and he prayed. And he came back and he gave salam to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said to him, Go back and pray because you didn't pray. So again the man went off and he prayed. And again he came back and he gave the salam and again the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to the salam and he said, go back and pray for you didn't pray. He said, oh messenger of Allah, I don't know anything other than this. I don't know any other way to pray apart from this. So teach me. And the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated to him that the problem in his prayer is that he was hasty. In one narration it was said he was pecking the ground sort of that his head was touching the ground much like you know, the chicken pecks the seed. So very quickly down and up, he was being hasty in his prayer. And so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him to let every single part of his body reach its resting place until all of the bones are settled and all of the body is settled. So that's what he would do. He, he would say that when you make the ruhur, you make the ruhur until your back is straight and you're settled and then you stand up and you raise until your back is straight and you return back every single part, every single part of your bones and every single part of your body returns back to completely still. And then again you begin with your sujood until every part of your body is settled. And then again you rise up until every part of your body is settled into your sitting position. And then again you prostrate until every part of your body is settled. And you do that in all of your prayer. So the problem that this companion, may Allah be pleased with him, had is that he was hasty in his prayer. And when he was hasty in his prayer, what happened to him was that he, his prayer was not accepted. And so the Messenger وسلم, indicated to him that you have to be slow and gentle and still in your prayer. So when you rise up, 
you rise up and your back returns every single bone and every single joint returns back to its normal place and then you begin the next action and not this kind of up and down very quick movement that we saw in this hadith we have a story of one of the prophets who was hasty and that is the story of Yunus السلام, the story of the noon of, of the companion of the fish or the companion of the whale and in this story of course he was sent to his people uh, to call them to Islam to call them to the worship of Allah and to abandon everything that is worship besides Allah and he called them and he called them and he didn't see any response and even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to stay and to continue instead he was hasty and he learned this lesson Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him this lesson alayhi salam in order for us to benefit from this lesson as well so we benefited from this lesson and he benefited from this lesson that he was a little hasty and he gave up on calling the people because he had received so much negativity so much rejection that he ran away and when he was on the boat of course the famous story happened that the boat began to sink in the rough weather and they had to throw some people aboard uh, and when they did so uh, they took lots and he kept on coming out as being the one that was thrown and he was thrown into the sea and he was swallowed by that large fish or the large whale uh, and then he and, and Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if it was not for the fact that he was from those who remembered Allah he would have been he would have resided in its belly until the day when they were resurrected until the day when mankind is to be resurrected but he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made his dua when he said to Allah that there is no God worthy of worship except for you and indeed I was from the people who had oppressed myself and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the chance to return back to his city and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there was no group of people who believed in their entirety except for the people of Yunus so when he returned back from his haste, when he gave up being a little bit hasty and being a little bit quick, when he realized his mistake and he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah blessed him with the chance to go back again, all of his people believed. Every single one of them. And that was not true for any prophet but him. He was the only prophet for which all of his people believed. And why did they believe or when did they believe? When he had abandoned being hasty and when he had returned to being patient and and to, 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 to sort of letting things take their natural course and then all of his people believed so when we go away from being hasty when we take our time to do things we get very 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 positive results in our judgments the way we judge between people when we make rulings between people we are commanded not to be hasty the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an that when people come to judge between you, when they come to ask for judgments, then do not judge in favor of the first until you hear the word of the second. So this is about not being hasty to judge. And this is another story of haste that happened to the prophets. We hear uh, the, the story of the people who came uh, for the judgment. And again, the Prophet ﷺ is instructing Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, that not to be hasty. In the means, like the story we hear uh, from the stories of the prophets about the sheep, when the uh, the person comes and says that I had, uh, you know, I had uh, ninety nine, or I had, uh, or, or my brother has ninety nine, and and he's taken all of my property, and of course, it's important when we judge between people, when we judge between our family, when we judge. Uh, between our friends when we judge in a position of authority that when we judge between people we take time to hear the word of the second before the first because if we don't hear the word of the second before the first then the risk is that we will be hasty we'll make a quick judgment and again we're being told to be patient when we hear the story of Musa السلام, with Al-Khidr and we hear about what they went through and we hear again about being patient and again Musa here is taught the lesson like all of the prophets are taught the lesson of not being hasty and so he even though Khidr says to him that you will not be able to be patient with me you'll not be able to last with me as we hear the story in Surah Al-Kahf 
that you're not going to be able to have patience with me. Still, Musa continues on and he falls short a few times uh, and he ends up being told uh, that, 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 that behind every action that was being done, there was a reason for it. There was something that was being revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something that was being uh, a means of, of guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we abandon being hasty, and when we abandon being hasty in our judgments, when we abandon being hasty in things that happen to us, when we abandon being hasty in our worship, we get a great deal of good. And when we are hasty in our worship, or we are hasty in our judgments, or we're hasty in anything else, then likewise, we see the negative effects of those upon us. We see that how those sort of things impact on a person, and how they cause problems for a person. So we see time and time again through the stories of the Prophets, the story of Musa, the story of Dawood and Sulaiman, the story of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the story of Yunus, the story of many of the Prophets, that the lesson is taught again and again, do not be hasty, do not be hasty. And inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to continue with this discussion after the break inshaAllah, in which we're going to talk a little bit more about how we practically uh, avoid being hasty and how some more of the examples of haste and how we can avoid it and some more of how we turn that towards the positive effects and try to reduce the negative effects with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all after the break, inshallah. I'm so tired, feels like feels like I've walked a thousand miles. Welcome back to Do Your Part. We're talking about haste and not being hasty. And we're saying that haste is probably one of the big problems that young people face today and one of the huge challenges that young people face today is that you are naturally hasty. We're all naturally hasty. And so we need to learn the lesson, like we said in the first part, the lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught to the prophets alayhim salam regarding not being hasty and regarding taking our time. We talked about this in worship and the one who prayed badly because he was too quick. We talked about it in judgments and the one who judged a little bit too quickly. We talked about it in calling people to Islam and the story of uh, Yunus salam and how Yunus was hasty in the beginning and then when he returned to being uh, taking his time and he returned to waiting for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed, then there was no doubt that it had such a positive effect and his whole people believed in him and he was blessed with that honor of being the only prophet that his entire people believed in him without any exception. So now we come on to continue to talk about this and to talk about haste and to talk about how we avoid haste. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this in the Quran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about this in the sunnah. So we know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has told us that haste is from the shaitan. And we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised the characteristics of those people who had patience and who were calm and took time to judge. And this is part of the meaning of al-hilm. And that is something which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised in the characteristic of a noble companion. May Allah be pleased with him who came. And he, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned that there was two characteristics in him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved and one of them was this characteristic of al-hilm of this sort of having s wisdom and, and being someone who is gentle and being someone who isn't hasty and doesn't rush to do things and takes his time and thinks about things and doesn't aim to create a huge big explosion but aims to sort of take things gently and slowly and try to be a positive influence these are some of the meanings of this hilm that the Prophet ﷺ praised we know in dua the Prophet وسلم, said with regard to our dua that all of your dua will be answered except those who rush or those who are hasty. The companion said, what does it mean to be hasty, O Messenger of Allah? And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, replied and said that they say or a person says, I have made dua and made dua and made dua and Allah has not answered me. And so he stops making dua. And this leads to a person, uh, their dua not being answered because they were hasty in their dua. Meaning, they wanted instant results. They wanted instantly, oh Allah, give me wealth. They wanted the wealth to come through the letterbox or to come through the door or to come into the bank on the moment they made the dua. And when it didn't happen, what did they do? They stopped making dua for that thing that they asked for. 
And this is a huge, huge, huge problem. Something we've got to get over and we've got to train ourselves not to be like, not to be hasty. When we judge between others, as we mentioned in the first part, we have to be so careful. And because we're not just talking about the one who sits in the court and hears about 99 sheep and one sheep and hears about, uh, you know, someone taking all of their wealth or, or someone doing this and that and the other. We're talking about you when you judge between your children. We're talking about you when you judge in an argument that's happened between some brothers. We're talking about you when you judge about any of the things that you judge about because judging and, and balancing up between different people and what they've done and deciding who's right and who's wrong is something that happens to us all the time. And that's why when the Quran talks so severely about ruling by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, this applies to every single Muslim because every Muslim rules and judges throughout their life on various different things. Yes, sometimes their judgment affects an entire country like a president or a prime minister and sometimes their judgment affects just a household like a father or a mother. But at the end of the day, when you judge between people, again, when you're too hasty, you're going to lead to uh, negative consequences and you're going to lead to causing problems and then regretting what you've done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when news comes to us, Ya ayyuhalladheena aman, in ja'akum, fasiqun, bi naba'in fatabayyanu, and in another qira'ah, another way of reading the Qur'an, fatathabbatu. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you, O oh you who believe, when there comes to you a disobedient person with some news, make sure of it. Make it clear. فَتَبَيَّنُوا فَتَثَبَّتُوا Make it clear, make sure of it, make certain of it. Because if you don't, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention? The negative consequence, that in case that you cause harm to a people, out of ignorance and then you regret what you've done after that. So you're hasty, you rush too much, somebody comes to you with some news and what happens is the people end up being hasty, they take the news straight away and then they, they believe it and they act upon it and then afterwards they become nadimin, they become regretful over what they have done and they become sad over what they have done and they say oh we shouldn't have been so hasty and we shouldn't have rushed so much so in the issue of news that comes to you and this is a very important ayah in general because even though the person mentioned here is the fasiq the, the disobedient, the rebellious Muslim that it still applies to those people who you don't know because the person who you don't know is more, of in, is, is more rightful of being cautious about than the person who you know is wrong because that person may be right and they may be wrong. They may be good and they may be bad. You don't know them. So when you get news that you don't know, and so many times we're so linked into the media these days, we're so linked into the world, we're connected to the internet, we get 24-hour news channels, we're constantly you know, tied into the world at large. Much of the news that we receive, we're not certain of. And so when you act upon that and you're hasty, you end up being regretful over what you've done. You know when you hear about a brother has said this about you or said that about you or a sister has said this about you or said that about you if you don't make sure of it what happens you go and you cause a big scene and you shout and you scream and then you realize that what you were told was not even right it had been misunderstood or the person who had told you was doing so for the sake of causing enmity between the people what we call namima going around and causing enmity between people and at the end of the day you end up regretful over what you've done so the aim here is that when you receive news from someone, you're not hasty. You take your time to check that it's true, to check that it's right, to make sure that it's correct, and then you take your time to act appropriately and think about how you're going to act. Especially when these issues relate to the general affairs of the Muslims. And we talked about this in a previous episode. The general affairs of the Muslims are not simple, it's not a simple issue. These things that affect all of the Muslims around and that, that cause huge you know, imp uh, impact and have huge implications to the Muslim Ummah. That you don't need to rush in these things. Rushing and being hasty is going to cause people later on to regret. And people are going to turn around at the end of the situation when everything has become clear and said, SubhanAllah, we were hasty. And we said something that was not befitting, something that wasn't right. We did something that caused us a greater problem later on. And there's no doubt that hastiness and rushing to do things, it has negative consequences. In business transactions, in, in thinking about marriage, we are commanded not to be hasty. 
This is why we have the prayer of istikhara. And I wanted to take a few moments just to talk about this prayer and what it means to do this prayer. There are many, many sort of uh, good places you can find descriptions of these prayers and so on and so forth. But just as an example, you pray to raka. You, make, you begin by making wudu very carefully and properly. You know, you make sure you wash all of the parts three times that you're going to wash three times and you take your time. You make wudu properly. And then when you've made wudu properly, you stand at a time when your mind is not preoccupied by anything else. And you're focused upon your prayer and you pray two raka'ah as perfectly as you possibly can. And either at the very end of the prayer, before the taslim or in the sujood, or just after the prayer, and there are different opinions amongst the scholars and it seems that whichever of you, them you do, your prayer is accepted inshallah. You ask Allah by the dua of istikhara, you ask Allah for this dua of what it is good, for, you know, dua of, of, of counsel, the dua of asking Allah what is best for you, and you say, oh Allah, you know everything and I know nothing, you decree everything and I don't decree anything, you know, you are alamul ghuyub, you know everything that is in the unseen. So if you know that this thing is good for me, and again, you know, there is a proper dua for this that you can look up and you can read in one of your books of dua, like Fortress of the Muslim, but just as a general sense that you say, oh Allah, if this is good for me, make it happen. And if this is bad for me, take it away from me. If this is bad for me, take it away from me. Don't let it happen and give me something else and make me content with what you've given me. And after this, it's not that you're aiming to have a dream. It's not that you're aiming to see a big sign in the sky that says, go do it. You know, do your part in great big letters in the sky. That's not what you're aiming to see. But what you're telling Allah, you're asking Allah is that, oh Allah, you know what's good for me, I don't know what's good for me. You decree things, I don't decree things. Oh Allah, if you know this is good for me in my religion and in my worldly life and in the end of everything, the consequences are going to be good, then make it happen and help it to happen. And so you continue with the decision that you've made, you continue with that decision, you progress, you move forward, Knowing that, at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you whatever is good for you in this deen and in this dunya and in the, the, the hereafter. So you're doing what is good for you with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is about not being hasty. You take your time. You know, in marriage, it can be very easy just to suddenly jump on something and say, yeah, you know, I, yes, I agree. But you didn't take your time. So you take your time. You pray your istikhara. You think about things. You reflect on things. Haste is from the shaitan and in all of your affairs you ask Allah's counsel, you take your time and this will reflect in positive results for you and take away some of the negative consequences that come from rushing. That's all we have time for in this episode inshaAllah ta'ala. So I leave you in the care of Allah until the next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa